Hey, sorry guys, I was on mute. Um, Alex, you on the call? Yep, I'm here. Okay, thank you. And I assume Mark, that's you. Oops. Mark, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I, I love it when I have the wrong Google account. But... <laughs> okay. Uh, Jim Curtis? Yep, I'm here. Oops, I went too many people typing at once. Jim Curtis. Um, Joe Sherman. Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Louie? Yep, I'm here. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm typing over people again. <laughs> okay, I heard Klaus. Let me start back up top. Uh, Yom, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Um, Austin, are you there? Hi, Doug. Hi, everyone. I'm here. Hello. Clemens? Yes. Hello. All right. Dan Barker. Yep, I'm here. All right. What about Eric? Yep, so I'm here. All right. Uh, hold on a minute. My window's getting too small. Holy moly, we've got a lot of people so far. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you're on, are you there? Yes, your run is here. Okay. Uh, Erand? E R A N D? Who is that? Hey, Iran from Iguazo is here as well. I'll probably do drop in the middle of the call and he'll uh, okay. continue with the logistics. Okay. Um, Thomas, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. What about Chris Porchers? Yep, I'm here. Okay, Matt Rakowski. I'm here. Uh, Michael P. Yeah, that's Michael Payne. I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Um, Stevo. I'm here. Uh, thank you, uh, William. William, are you there? Not yet. Okay, uh, John Mitchell, are you there? John Mitchell? Okay, what about William, are you there yet? Okay, let's see. Baram. Yep, I am here. Excellent, David Lyle? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Um, oh, Aaron, I got your last name now. Thank you. D U C H A N. Uh, William, it sounds like you're still having issues, or it looks like you're having issues. So, John, now we can't hear you. Yeah, John, we can't hear you. I'll, I'll mark you as there since you're obviously at least somewhere around there. <laughs> But if you can speak, that'd be nice. Um, let's see who else. Who's on 925-699-0277? Oh, that's you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, Chad, are you there? I am here. Hello. Excellent. Hello. Is there anybody I missed? This is Rachel. Oh, hi, Rachel. Is uh, Sarah with you? No, not right now. Okay. Um, I think that might be everybody except William. So William, if you are on the call, we cannot hear you. And John said he's going to dial back in. Okay, let's get people. Oh, we are actually at time. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and share my screen. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is it? I think that's the one. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. I can't. On. Zoom is not showing me the participants. Hold on a sec. I, I apologize. I 
just came out of a different meeting and I'm a little flustered trying to get it organized here. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We'll finish up roll call later. Um, AIs. Uh, the one that stood out to me that we need to definitely tackle is Austin. Um, do you have what you need for getting permission to mention people's company's name? Yes, I was going to bring that up on this call. Um, I was thinking it could be as simple as we, I just acknowledge all the people who are on the contributors list right now. And this isn't, and I'm going to characterize it as not an official endorsement, um, but just that we're, we're voluntarily collaborating on this effort. Um, so I think if that sounds good with everyone, I'd, I'd like to just do that. And because they already added their names to that contributors list, then I figured that they feel comfortable um, being known as a, as a contributor to this project. What if, what if me, but... the team wants to be stronger? <laughs> <laughs> I think what you proposed there sounds reasonable to me, but what do other people think? Are you going with only names or also logos? Um, I was going to go, I was going to do names and logos. Um, people in, included in that contributors list, they included their projects and their companies in there. And I believe that's because they want those to be known as contributing to this effort. Got it. Okay. Is there any concern or objection to doing it that way? Okay. It sounds like you got permission. Anything else you need, Austin? I think that's it. All right. Do you need logos? Um, I could, I can fetch them. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get logos for the company as well as their, their respective projects that they listed on there. Um, okay. You sound concerned, Clemens. <laughs> no, it's just, I, uh, it, 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 it happens that people use the wrong ones. So, um, you can use you can use our logo as long as the, it's the right one. That's kind of the constraint. Uh, I'll I'll send I'll send Austin something. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a concern, if if you if you're concerned that Austin might grab the wrong one from the, the from the World Wide Web, please send. Yeah, the, the, we have a, we have a relatively new uh, Azure logo, and as, and we might go and decide we want to have a a different logo. So I'll send something to Austin. Cool. And you know what? What would be more helpful in the future is just if maybe in that collaborators or contributors list, people can add an artwork there somewhere potentially. Uh huh. Because we might use, we might just need to centralize all that because we're probably going to copy a lot of that, put it on the Cloud Events website at some point, and get we want those logos on that website too. Then, then, then I suggest you make a rule that says this is how big they need to be. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a rat hole right there. Yeah, in, the no, interim, um, in the interim, if you, if you feel strongly that I need to use a specific logo, um, just ping me on, on Slack, send it to me on Slack. I've got a design background, so I, I guarantee all of you I'm going to make you look good. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, okay. So, hold on. Fudge. He's taking over my mouse. All right. Thank you. Um, moving forward then, just to remind everybody, it should be obvious, we are not gonna have a phone call next week because most of us will probably be at KubeCon. However, we will have an official meeting on Wednesday, 8.20 p.m. Uh, Copenhagen time at the conference itself. And the assumption there is um, as long as we have a, uh, a, a connection back to Zoom, then it will be an official meeting. If we do not have a connection back to Zoom, then it's unfair for people who aren't there. So we should not make it an official meeting. That's, I believe, what we agreed to in a previous phone call. Is there any concern or disagreement with that? Okay. In that case, um, in prep for the meetings, I did start to fill out the Google Doc for the topics for the birds of a feather and for the face-to-face. Um, I would actually, I'm not sure how much time I want to spend on this call unless there's a particular issue on there that people think really should not be there. Um, 
I figure for the face-to-face -face meeting, it's actually going to be more like a regular meeting. So we'll just have the normal agenda doc appear, our, our normal uh, list of topics appear in our agenda doc as normal. For the birds of a feather session, though, I was wondering what you guys thought in terms of how we wanted to organize that. Do we want to actually come up with a, a definitive sort of list of topics to bring up there in case audience members don't have questions for us? Do you want to play it more by ear? How do people want to work that? The less agenda we have, the more interactive it can get, right? Yeah, I was I was going to play it by ear, but yeah, me too. I'm not sure how comfortable people feel with that. I figure we have enough people on this phone call who like to talk that that probably isn't an issue to fill the time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I think that sounds I think that sounds good. One note is that um, I'm not going to talk about cloud events. My talk is until Friday, uh, so it'll be after this Birds of a Feather session. Um, I don't know who else will be mentioned in cloud events and whatnot, but my concern is that the word won't be out before this meeting and there may not be a lot of people that show up as a result. So perhaps we could, I'm not sure how to fix that, but we, we need to get an announcement somewhere um, to encourage people to show up. I wonder if this, I'm assuming Dan Kahn is going to have main stage time at some point. I'm wondering if we could get him or somebody else to casually drop a line or drop a reference to it somewhere. That would be, that would be a great way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Keynote mention always oh, drives traffic. I believe it's their interest. I think they mentioned the serverless working group quite a bit the last time. Yeah. So tell you what, I'll, I'll take the AI to reach out to Dan. Um, So he, he did this last time, actually, the last Cloud Native Con. Yeah. I think it would be in their best interest to do that as well. So I'll, I'll take the AI to do that. OK. Anything else? Actually, I don't need that there. I'll put it in the agenda doc. OK. Anything else relative to the face-to-face -face or the birds of a feather session that we need to think about in advance. Okay, uh, please do add more topics to the birds of a feather session if you can think of them, just so we have something on paper um, in advance, although I'm sure we can wing it if we need to. So we'll have the, um, the session, the, the link um, on the first session or the second session? I'm sorry, we'll have what on the first session? Uh, be able to join remotely. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the joining remotely will be for the official face-to-face. -face. I okay. guess we could try to do the remote during the birds of a feather. Um, I don't see why that couldn't work. So hold on, let me make a note of that. Because if we can do it, we probably should. Oops. And I just reminded myself. Great, thank you. Yep. All right, anything else? All right, um, Austin or Mark, would you guys like to bring everybody up to date on the interop event stuff? I would, I'd like to, can we discuss something else for five minutes? I'm just realizing sure. I'm in the wrong conference room and I'm getting kicked out, I gotta switch. Sure. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you wanted to say. Okay, yeah, we'll wait five minutes. Um, tell you what, let's pick off an easy PR then. That's always fun. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Um, aside from the interop event, is there anything relative to KubeCon that people think we need to talk about? Anything logistic-wise or anything like that? Okay. Not uh, hearing one, any. I have one quick comment, Doug, and I, I'm all ready to go, by the way. Oh, okay, go ahead. If I have some spare time, I'd like to do just a little bit of design improvements uh, to our website and maybe to some of our um, logo assets. This is, this is it's, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to pull this off, um, but I think there's, uh, I could do some, um, some improvements that would enhance the user experience. Okay, are you looking for some sort of permission or help or, or just say this is just an FYI? Um, I was just putting it out there. This may come kind of as a last minute PR and I'm just wondering if, if that could cause any potential problems. 
Okay, anybody have any concerns with that? So you what kind of improvements are you looking at making? Quite, so the improvement you are going to do that through a PR, is that right? Correct, yes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, which we should actually vote on. Um, so you know what? I, I don't think this is. I don't think this is a good idea anymore. It's got to be done <laughs> through through all of us. And last thing I, I need is is more action items. So never mind. Forget all of that. Uh, and if you want to chat about um, this interoperability demo, uh, I'm ready when you are, Doug. Okay, go for it, Austin. <laughs> cool. Um, so I'm giving a talk at Cloud Native Con. It's just discussing serverless and the event driven. Uh, future. The goals of the talk are um, I want to introduce cloud events and announce this initial version, uh, communicate the why and use cases of cloud events, illustrate what will be possible in the future with it, and make it real for the audience by showing off a neat demo. Um, and also I want to tell our story of collaboration and celebrate everybody who's, who's helped us get uh, to where we are today. Um, but thematically the, the talk and especially the demo is going to focus on interoperability between environments. Um, and the way we're going to do this right now is we have um, events being published currently from multiple sources. Um, so I've rigged up a S3 event publisher that simply detects when an image is uploaded to S3, converts that to a S3 object created cloud event, and then publishes it to any, any functions as a service that they want to subscribe to it. Um, and Clemens has rigged up the same thing, but on Azure Storage. Uh, and basically, whenever something is uploaded to Azure Storage, it is converted to an Azure Storage Cloud event and then published to any fast subscribers that want to listen to it. So right now we have two publishers, uh, which is great. They're both publishing these events. Um, and we're working with a few people who are interested to create some FAS functions to do something with those events. And these FAS functions are simply going to do some processing of the image that was uploaded uh, and then post the results to Twitter because we felt that a cool solution to the observability problem of how to understand what the heck just happened would be if we simply just dumped results of the subscriber functions into, um, into a Twitter feed. And that'll be kind of our uh, event log. And there's a bit of an element of kind of virality incorporated in that because it's through Twitter, which could be kind of cool. So this is, so currently the status is we've got two events coming from two different publishers. That's Azure and AWS. They're both publishing a uh, kind of a different type of cloud event. AWS is publishing a cloud event uh, for AWS S3 object created. The Azure one is publishing a cloud event for Azure storage object created. Uh, and there's a few people who've written fast functions already. Um, I think so far that's that's Mark Peak. Uh, Mark, you've written a function, I think, right? Yeah, I'm I'm running it through uh, our dispatch uh, framework, and then publishing out to a dis dispatch framework demo feed, <clears throat> and I'll switch it over to the cloud events feed at some point. Cool. Okay, so we have something from VMware, which is awesome. Uh, Doug has written a function as well, right, Doug? Yep, running an IBM Cloud Functions, yep. Cool. Um, Kathy, I know you want to participate. Uh, uh, Louis, I think you're you're working on on something as well. Yeah, but the, together we're working on something, and essentially we're going to be a FAS function that will um, receive something from the um, event gateway and post to Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that event will go through uh, the Huawei function stage uh, service platform and then invoke a function that will post um, something to the Twitter, yeah. Fantastic. All you need to have to integrate into the demo is simply have a FAS function that exposes a publicly accessible HTTP endpoint that can receive a post request. And the cloud event is going to be in the request body. Um, so it's fantastic that we have a lot of people who want to integrate. I think the only thing we should chat about now um, is, you know, we have these two different events coming from these two different platforms. Um, this means that people, and in, in the demo, I'd love to actually run through just, hey, I'm going to upload something to AWS, 
and look at all these functions that just reacted to it and posted in the Twitter feed. And hey, I'm going to upload something now to Azure Storage and look at all these functions that just reacted to it. Yep. Um, the, only, the only thing I think that might make this whole scenario more convenient is right now, if people want to integrate, they have to write their functions to handle both the Azure Storage event as well as the AWS S3 event, which isn't honestly that much code. Um, I wanted to suggest the idea that maybe what comes from Azure and what comes from AWS is a common storage created event. It's like yeah, an but, abstraction. Yeah, but it can't be <laughs> because we haven't standardized that bit. So we should not, we should not, we should not pretend that we have because we haven't. Sure. And it's not, you know, the intention wasn't to say, oh, and look at this new standard event that we've also announced. Um, it was just a, a, a simplicity hack. For now, yeah, so only, uh, I, th I think we already made a, made things a lot a lot simpler than they were um, between you know across AWS and, and Azure. But we should th there's enough enough differences between S3 and Azure Storage that I would not necessarily take a step further. Mm -hmm. Hey, Austin. Yes, this is uh, Rob Dolan from Oracle. I can talk to you offline about it, but I want to make sure that uh, we're also uh, part, of, uh, part of the demo. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, I sent you a message on uh, CNCF Slack as well, so we can connect. Yeah, same sure. with uh, Thomas here from Google. Uh, we've got a couple of aspects of the demo, like we might be able to contribute uh, one or more event providers as well as an event broker. So we do have a, a Slack channel. Um, just ping one of us and we'll get you know, we'll have you guys join because that and then we could have a offline chats about how to hook everything up. Yeah. I, Austin, I just another, added him onto the, the cloud events demo channel. Austin, oh. one other point. I thought that we agreed that uh, Azure would be like a blob store and uh, S3 would be more like a text processing, like sentiment analysis or something. So are, are now both going to be images? Yes, you're on your, you're right. We discussed that. Um, I think right now we should just focus on one use case just to keep it simple and we should go with images. Okay. And can we get a link to a configured repository that stores the images so we can do the testing? Yeah. Testing this is, is a bit, is a bit hard. Certainly. Um, I've written up some ways okay. to do it for the AWS S3 event. I think Clements has done something similar, but yeah, I think we sure should, code. yeah, we should figure this out in that, in that private Slack channel. Um, so sure, if, but, uh, we can simplify it because the event we can simulate. We just need a blob store to store, you know, several pictures. Uh, we can uh, just verify that we have access to the bucket and you know, all that. That, that's all that's all done like I have a I have a uh, an Azure logic app that uh, grabs an image from uh, one of my Flickr sets um, every five minutes right now just because I don't want to trigger Twitter's um, robot detection um, and then uh, goes and posts to one of the one of the accounts we, we were just hanging out together in on slack for the last what one and a half hours and just made it all plucked together so adding okay. adding more is not a is not a big is not will not be a big deal and that function runs forever now so um, as soon as I have a URL I can go and hook you hook you in and then you'll get you'll get pushed to and I can also reduce the frequency to less than five minutes um, but it's a there's a randomizer in there so which means if I set this to a minute then everybody gets called. You know every five three five or six minutes depending on how many URLs I have right now I have have three targets hooked up. So one thing that I'm not sure about though is the Twitter side of it. Are we all tweeting under separate accounts or are we gonna all use that shared account that Mark stood up? So I, I, would, I would be, uh, I think having separate accounts and then putting them into one timeline for the demo uh, is better than just one account because it's, it surfaces that you're actually talking to different systems. Yeah, plus Twitter has really aggressive rate limits and I'd hate to have us just demo fail because the combination of all the participants triggered that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I, I readily admit I am a Twitter neophyte. So <gasps> how do we create a timeline for this and what's the proper way to make that happen? Use a hashtag. Yes. Is that all it is? Just create a hashtag? Instead of a hashtag, use a Twitter list. 
We can make a list, yes. So we, Twitter has lists, and I already started one, but with the wrong account. And we can basically just share the list, and then you subscribe to the list, and everybody can see it. Or you can just click on the list, and you see the entire timeline of those accounts. Okay, so Clemens, can you take the action item to set up that list and send out an information? Yes, that, that will be very well, since, cool. since Austin is giving giving the talk, he needs, he needs to own the list, or doesn't need to own the list? That might be the easiest thing, because... Awesome. So, uh, as one demo caution, is this a like a bucket that the audience members will have access to? <laughs> no. Um, the way it, the way I set it up on on S three and Clemens can speak to the Azure Azure storage bucket um, is simply I only have access to upload to it, but everybody has access to read from it. Yeah, okay, I have the same thing. Yeah. I just want to make sure that. Uh, you know, it's very popular to embarrass a presenter by forcing something embarrassing to go up on the Twitter feed on camera. We've yeah, been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes it so Thanks much for having fun. my back, Thomas. <laughs> I, I mean, if, if anyone wants so a close to it, right? If anyone wants an embarrassing read, look at what happened to Coca Cola. So basically, uh, you just took away all of our fun, Thomas. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I just got a ping from Chad Arimura from the FN team. One of the interesting things that uh, he has is uh, image recognition of license plates on FN. So if we have images of license plates, we could uh, do something with integrating image recognition. Yeah, that's actually what I'm doing on, on our site, uh, Rob, as well, except not just license plates, it's a, any picture, Watson will tell you what's in it. So yeah, that's the kind of yeah. stuff that we're all doing. Yeah, we'll so I, 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 like that, I like that suggestion. Um, I also believe in, in knowing your audience and speaking to them. And I've got an alternative proposal that to help kind of clarify our focus and, and the use case that we're going to show off. I think we should upload an image of Dan Kahn, <laughs> the executive director of the CNCF, and do something fun with his, his headshot. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. But I also I so. know Dan kind of socially and think he would get a kick out of it. What do you yeah. think, Chris? I think he'll yeah, be fine I, with it. I also suggested having a sort of an ambiguous picture and see which one interprets it correctly between Watson and TensorFlow and Azure, you know? Yeah. So I, I have, I've currently hooked up pictures from uh, the Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha. Uh, and those is what I'm, what I'm pushing. And it's uh, Watson is doing a really good job at it, actually. Well, I think we could just, I, I think people will, can upload whatever, almost whatever they want, but it's, as, you're, as you're running through it in your actual demo itself, uh, Austin, you, you can obviously upload whatever you want since it's your demo. Yeah. Um, but Clemens has this thing that fires off things every now and then anyway, so people can watch it throughout the day. That's right. Okay. So, so in the demo, I think I'm going to upload the image of Dan. I think it'll be fun. I think the audience will appreciate it at, C at Cloud Native Con. Um, you know, your functions, it sounds like, can do anything with any image, um, but it's just a matter of doing something, something useful with it and printing it to Twitter. That's where you, all of you have to get creative, I guess. Yep. Okay. Relative to the demo, we have the private Slack channel, so everybody should be able to join or ping somebody to get added to it for the, so we can work offline. Uh, Austin, is there anything else you need in preparation for your session? Um, I still feel like uh, helping people get integrated into this thing could be a bit improved. Uh, Clemens, you have your Azure Bridge GitHub repo, right? And, but yeah. this is, let's see, this is, this looks like it's kind of Azure focused. I'm wondering if, I also have just a cloud events demo repo. I think I'm going to, and in this repo I've listed, um, I've listed the AWS S3 event so you can see exactly what shape it is. And I think I'm gonna just grab the Azure storage event and I'll, I'll also put it in here. So all the FAS integrators yeah. can look at the event schema and, yeah. and just they'll have one place to look at both these schemas. So I'm gonna yeah, do I, that I, and post it in Slack right after this, I think. Yeah, I, I, I put, I just put all the code that I needed to make this work from both sides 
um, in that one repo. So I have kind of the production side, which is fetch from Flickr and then the, or, or pick something from Flickr and then the upload to storage, that's, that's the one half and that triggers then the event and I have the event translator and I have the, the, the our effectively Twitter function that's all sitting in that, in that one repo. And then what's, what I haven't uploaded yet is the, the little logic app thing, which wires those things up, but I posted on the, on the private channel, I posted a picture of how that looks. Um, yeah. That's basically just doing a schedule. I set this to five minutes. It calls the first function to go and pick, to pick a file. And then it uh, calls the second function to upload that file to the storage account. So that's just purely the, the publishing, the application level publishing thing that then goes and actually causes the event flow to, to, to start. Cool. Uh, Clemens, can you send me uh, an example schema of that, of that event? And I'll put it in this, in my cloud events demo repo right after this. And then uh, I can- yeah, I'll, I'll fetch that from the, uh, the, either fetch it from the logs or yeah, you can have that. Cool. And in the, in the chat channel in this Zoom conversation, I just pasted the repo that I have right now. It exposes the S3 cloud event schema. Um, so it's going to look exactly like that when you receive it in your fast function. I'll update it later today with Clemens's uh, Azure one. And just to clarify again, if you want to integrate, create a fast function that is accessible via HTTP endpoint, must be public. Um, and you should design it to receive both S this S3 event and the upcoming Azure cloud event as well. And it's up to you to do something interesting with the image um, that's going to be contained in these events and post it to Twitter. So Austin, should we uh, post our URI to or the uh, endpoint to the uh, Slack channel? Yeah, I think so for now. Um, yeah, so it's, I think it's super important. Everyone who wants to participate, join the you know the cloud events channel. Tell Doug that you want to participate. He'll invite you to the private cloud events demo channel that we have going. Yep. Thanks. All right. Anything else relative to the demo or Austin session? All right. In that case, last chance. Anything relative to? CNCF KubeCon that we need to discuss for uh, logistics? Uh, press. Press. Hmm. What would you like to say about that? It would be great <laughs> if we had some. <laughs> <laughs> You're so demanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm from Hollywood. <laughs> Do we have a blog post that's announcing uh, V0.1? So I, I, I did post a blog. On Twitter. Yeah, I did post a blog yesterday um, through IBM, but obviously other people should do the same thing through their own companies. Yeah, I, I, um, I did see that blog post, Doug, but I think we should have something that comes out right during Cloud Native Con, preferably during the beginning of it, so people can start chatting about it while they're there and attending. Chris our Anichik, is it likely that uh, someone from Linux Foundation PR could... Uh, take a quick cut at something and get it up uh, for one of the days during Cloud Native Con? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Natasha. Um, we just, uh, let, me, let me think about it a little bit. It shouldn't be an issue. Great. All right, cool, thank you, Chris. Anything else? All right. In that case, let's jump into PRs and stuff. Uh, Clemens, you're up first with definition of context. Uh. Uh. <laughs> what was that uh for? Uh, nothing, it just goes back into, into abstract territory and I've been in concrete territory for the longest time. <laughs> okay. Um, And I haven't looked at this for a long time. Um, so, uh, well, it seems to be non controversial for whatever it's worth. Yeah, so, I, I, think, I think what I did here is to, I mostly uh, made it uh, refer to um, the stuff around before it. So the, the notion of occurrence and the. Uh, um, 
the data. <laughs> yeah, con basically saying basically saying the context is 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 oh, the, the, difficult with these definitions. The the context data is setting the event that you're sending into context. It's giving you more information around it. Right. So obviously the text is on the screen. It's not a whole lot. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to read it. Is there any questions? Or are there any questions or concerns with us? Any objection to adopting this? Okay, I figured that'd be easy. Thank you guys. Gosh, I can't type today. Uh, Sarah's not on the call, but let's see, I don't think. She fixed this one up, so I think it's meant to be. Ready. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. <clears throat> So, Rachel, do you want to talk this one or just do I just jump into asking yeah. people if had a chance to look it over? I think so. I don't know if there's more to say about this than we've talked about before. I think the changes that we've talked about last time are now represented here. Yeah. This, this, uh, just so you guys know, um, in case you haven't had a chance to fully read it in the past, it, it does not touch the spec. It's all about adding additional documentation to the community folder for things like open source projects or demos and stuff like that. It's to sort of beef up the community itself. It does not touch the spec. Are there any questions or concerns about this one? It would be good to land this one so that we can now add the content into these uh, pages. Yep, definitely true. All right, with that, is there any objection to accepting it? Excellent. Thank you. Clemens, you're up next with definition or clarify content type. Hey, Doug, Doug before we move on yeah. from that last one, yep. how do we prove content going into these pages? I'm assuming just the PR. Okay. Is that, is that a, acceptable? Do you want to propose a different process? Well, does it have to go through full review by this committee if we're talking about open source projects and demos? I, would, I was actually going to treat that a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of like a, I can't remember the term we used in the past, but more of like a syntactical thing, where as long as we get maybe one or two LGTMs on there and it doesn't look controversial, then I was going to let it go in, if that's okay. Okay, that's, that's the clarification I wanted. I, okay. I agree with that. Okay. Should we document that different process somewhere? I think we actually may. I'll, I'll double check after the call, but I think there's something that talks about syntactical things the administrator can do on their own, but if it's, and I don't think it's, it's clear enough, I'll open a PR to make that clear. Cool. Okay. Anything else relative to that? Um, we could also just uh, basically say that community contributions in general, because we also have a section for presentations, right? And just say that like, hey, if you're contributing just ancillary material about your work in the space, it's in the slider review process. Yeah, I'll work on that. Shouldn't be a big deal. All right, cool. Um, Clemens, content type. Let's see. Yay! <laughs> you want to talk to this one? Uh, yeah, we had we had uh, several conver conversations about the content type and the the what that actually means, um, and there was significant confusion around what that means, um, because um, we have two concepts of content type um, uh, floating around. One is the content type of the overall e event envelope, and then that's the content type of the the event data. Um, and uh, so I clarify here that the content type that we carry as an attribute is really declaring what the, what the content type of the data uh, attribute is um, and give um, and also give an example. So you might go and render an event as JSON, but the, that event might carry um, an XML payload. And so you need to be able to go and declare that. And XML is something that I'm just referencing here, something that is odd and old, uh, but uh, it might quite well also be binary. So if you have an IoT use case and uh, um, you raise an alarm from uh, a device, uh, that alarm may be uh, expressed in the native, um, uh, whatever native format the device is using uh, to raise alarms today. Um, and we're just we're, we're cloud cloud eventifying it with the envelope so that everybody can understand it, it can flow it. But ultimately, if you want to get at the details of the alarm, you may have a special decoder 
um, to go and uh, and get the details, details of them. There's a, a billion different lingos, obviously, that devices speak. To be able to carry that that native data, the native data, you need to be able to de to declare it, um, and that's what that content type is for. So that's the equivalent. That's the equivalent of the content type in MQTT, um, or the content type that's in NQP. Um, it's it's really about the the data that the data that's being carried. And then there's we have several in in all of our in all of our um, transport binding proposals, including the one that we're f we've uh, um, the mapping that we already accepted for HTTP, um, we're referring to this field uh, in that in that way. Um, I think the change can be made even better if we also just kind of explain that this this does imply there might be double encoding. So I did get my uh, structured and binary JSON uh, encoding working with cross encoding for XML payloads. Um, but I had to, I was, uh, had to add like extra JSON value encoding and decoding to make sure that all the XML characters were rendered as safe JSON characters. So, so Thomas, are you suggesting an alternative text here or, or are you looking for a change or, or just? I'm suggesting that maybe in another sentence or something like that. Uh, I don't know if it's, we might be fine just explaining in every single transport document that, by the way, because this transport document transports over XML or over JSON, if you have a non-JSON type, it must be JSON decoded before it's uh, but, but, arbitrary decoded. Yeah, so that's, that is the job of the JSON format to de declare this because here we're, this is why we have an abstract type system, right? We have, we, we go and say, this is a string that declares this, the data attribute can have three different shapes. It can carry a binary, it can carry a string, or it can carry a map. And then if it's a binary, which you would describe with this content type, then there's a mapping of that binary into JSON. And that mapping into, that mapping into JSON obviously needs to follow the rules of JSON. But if you have a mapping into, let's say, message pack, message pack natively understands binary. And so therefore, you don't need to apply any of those special rules. So that's so, so that specific how you put the stuff on the wire or into an encoding format so that it doesn't uh, mess up that encoding format is the job of the encoding format. So that clarification goes that clarification if needed um, should go into the JSON format. Okay. So are you, are you okay with the text as it is, Thomas? Yeah, yeah I just um, I was bringing up an optional addition and it doesn't seem like it's like other people are rallying behind it being necessary. So that's fine. Okay. Well, as with everything, if, if upon thinking of, a, of it more, you think additional text is needed, we can always do another PR follow on to this one to add it. So, All right. Any other questions or comments? I have a question on this. So, um, so for the content type, this defines the, format of the um, data. So if I would like to get a information, uh, or filter out uh, information uh, of the data, for example, some specific segment, does, is this enough or how should so, that down? So for you to be able to filter out or to, to, to make an intelligent uh, decision about what to pick from that data, you need to know what the data is. So what this helps you, what th this, this only helps you understand what, what data means and what is in the data attribute. So if, if, it, carries, if it carries, let's say, uh, XML data, um, it will say application slash, slash XML. And then you know that the data field that, that contains then, let's say, a string, you know that you have to run that string through an XML parser before you then can go and pick out information from it. You actually have to run it through a JSON parser and or JSON decoder and then an XML parser. No, no you don't because I because it will blow up the default encoding library for Golang. I, I have a working PR and I had to do that to make it work. No, but at the level of this specification, at the level of this specification, it's it's a string or it's a binary or it's a map. And then, and then, and so as long as, so if you, if you take it that it is already a string that needs to run it to, through an XML parser. Yes, if you take the event in as JSON first, then you need to run it through a JSON decoder uh, per rules of JSON. 
and then you have a string that you then run through the XML. So that's it's a multi-layered thing, right? If you come if you come from if you come from message pack, then JSON plays a role because um, the, the 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 data attribute was never in JSON format. Would it be useful just to add a sentence that says implementers need to be aware of having to possibly do multiple encodings or something along those lines, just to give you a heads up that it's not just a simple dump whatever you want here. I mean, the, the content type is going to shape what you put there and, and the transport of which you're sending it, like, for example, JSON. Yeah, so I think what would help is to have a... Um, so what, one of the things we're still missing is uh, there is some implicit architecture that has now, has now built up um, for the um, for the relationship between the transport mappings and the transports and the encodings and this, and we haven't written that down yet. And so I think that's that's missing for clarification. Is that something that would go into the, um, into this doc, into the spec, or into one of the trans into one of the encoding documents? Where do you see that? Um, either here, if we're I think if we do an introductory architecture section, that would be. Um, useful. I don't need. I don't think this needs to be long, but it's like this is the core specification. The specification, the further specifications specif specify a set of transports and a set of encodings. Here's the relationships. Go read this. Go read that. Because I think. I think if I remember correctly, I think Sarah might actually have either an issue or even a PR out there that talks about trying to lay out uh, the high-level architecture of what we're trying to do here. And I'm wondering if that would be a good spot for this text. Yeah, I think. I think so. Because, because ultimately, this, what, what, this here is, sits at the very bottom of everything. And um, so I think this is good to do. So we have, I'm, and I'm using some examples that kind of reference out. Um, but we have here the abstract type, the, the goal of the abstract type system is to allow um, um, interactions effectively across different encodings where you don't need to normalize on a particular encoding where you don't need to go and say this comes this all the, always there's always JSON in play you should be able to go from you should be able to contain XML and message pack you should be able to contain JSON and Avro you should be able you know in, in all those different combinations and the only command commonality across all of them is kind of this super simple type system okay so looking at this one itself uh, I guess Kathy, Thomas, or anybody else, is there something that needs to be changed here? Or is this a more a matter of in a follow-on PR, we may want to do some extra clarifications or guidance type words someplace else? I, I think some clarification here would be helpful. But in addition, we might need a more, you know, um, high level, um, how to say it, um, description of how, you know, how these are structured and which one refers to which. Okay. I'll, I'll, be ha I'll be happy to go and amend this one to go and add the further section and then see and then see the see this in context. I have no okay. problem with that. Okay, so if you're willing to update the PR, that's fine. Okay. Is there any objection to heading that direction? Okay, so you'll work on tweaks to the PR. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, where are we? Okay. Um, Kathy, you wanted to talk about the correlation field today, so I brought that up. And just to let you know, I, I brought on, I put on the agenda because you asked for it. Um, however, this actually may be a really good topic for the face-to-face, -face. Um, but I'll let you decide that. Yeah, yeah, I think probably face to face is good, but I can just talk a little bit briefly on this, you know, this is related to the content type. So the, I think, you know, in the comment, I see that people are saying, you know, because this is like for correlation field, I, I guess I, I did the presentation in the, one of the pre previous meetings. Uh, I'm not sure whether people would still um, like me to go through this uh, use case. This is basically it is to correlate multiple events, which are associated associated with the same um, instance. I mean, application instance. How we are going to do that? This correlation information could be embedded in the data, in the data stream, and then uh, people. Some people are concerned if we need to decode, you know, multi layer of decoding from that data stream. 
on is too much. So we need a correlation field explicitly, you know, defined um, in the event attributes. Yeah, I think that's the background. Yeah, I'm, I'm also I'm also interested. I think having this at the having that discussion at the face to face will be actually useful because um, this takes us back to some of the debates that we had around source. Um, and I still believe that this cor that the correlation you're looking for is expressible um, using the source URI. But having that, I think the face to face will be will be a great place to have a have a look, extended chat about about whether that sort of satisfies That's your needs and 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 how else we might go and and add correlation. I'm not sure that uh, we need to have an extra field. Yeah, Kathy, Kathy, will you be there at Coupon? Yes, I will be there. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so if, for example, like in the correlation, I uh, just want to add a little bit more. Um, the correlation field for different applications could be different. For some, it could be, I gave an example before for IoT use case, could be a house number, or could be the, the, that device IP, I mean, um, device IP address, or it could be like for some other use case, could be like travel request ID. It's all different. I, I, my feeling is those information might be, you know, will be embedded or might be embedded in the data stream itself. It yeah. will not be part, could, in some, for some cases, it might not be part of the source, source ID or whatever. Um, in some cases, it could be. So that's why I think, um, yeah, maybe we need to discuss this uh, in a more extensive way. In yeah, we have, we have three, we have three um, ongoing issues slash PRs that are heading in that same direction. One is um, we have um, lack of clarity around what extensions are. Um, then there is a proposal out there for um, further clarifying the source um, URI with descriptive attributes. You need, you want to have correlation, a correlation field, which if you go and, and, and write down a you know, location taxonomy for a sensor in a house is more complicated than um, maybe just one field. Um, so I think, I think what we might land is that we're gonna have some kind of a property bag, um, and, but we should go and figure out what the shape of that property bag needs to be and what the rules around that are. Yeah, sounds like a good face-to-face -to -face topic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't want to put you in the spot to come up with an answer, but one mental exercise I'd like to discuss at KubeCon is given your house example. Um, imagine if I were a property owner of a, an apartment complex and I wanted to let each member of my, my units uh, have their own event stream for their house, but I also wanted to observe events for the entire property. Uh, I'm curious to discuss face-to-face -face in KubeCon what we can do that would enable that sort of selection. Yep. I think that's a very good, you know, point. I also have the same, um, I share the same thought. Yeah. So let's discuss that. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I'll I'll add this to the agenda for the face to face meeting. All right. Cool. Anything else on this one to uh, to talk about? All right. Cool. Thank you, Kathy. Now, unfortunately, <clears throat> I don't think Clemens, your next two ones are ones we could do in about five minutes. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's okay with you, I'd like to see what people think about this one, which I think is relatively small. It's just removing the, the uh, case sensitivity requirement for our HGP headers. I think I opened this one up on Monday. It's a relatively easy one if you guys want to take a quick look. And if you don't, if you don't think you have time to, or you don't feel like you have enough time to look at it right now, it's fine. We can defer it. But otherwise, I thought it might be an easy one to get in. As a small typo correction, header names are plural. Uh, where? Oh, okay, I'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> aside, aside from that obvious mistake, yes. Um, anything this, else? The, um, thank you for doing the work. Yeah. Um, any questions, comments? People requesting delays or, or more time to review? Okay. With that one typo change of name to names, is, is there any objection to adopting this one? All right, cool. Okay, in that case, since we're almost out of time, two things I want to do. Uh, hold on a minute. Where is it? Uh, there. Okay. 
Um, two things. One, offline, Mark Peake mentioned to me, and to remind you guys, that there is a serverless track at KubeCon, and here's the URL to it right here. So that might be of interest to you if you want to see what all the serverless uh, topics are or sessions are. Okay. And finally, go back to the usual fun of attendance. Ryan, are you on the call? Yes, I'm, I'm here. All right. William, are you able to talk now? Yep, I'm here. Excellent. I already got Rob. I heard you. Kathy, I heard. Chris, I heard. Uh, Gurnesh, are you there? Gurnesh, are you there? No. Okay. Is there anybody on the call who I do not have on the agenda with an asterisk next to their name? I think I might got it. I might have gotten everybody. All right. In that case, a couple minutes left. Is there any other topic people would like to bring up that's relatively small? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, uh, so Austin, so for the demo, are you going to run your um, the the cloud events gateway on on your I mean from a server on your in at your at your company or are you going to run that on the laptop you bring to that um, conference? Um, the routing is going to be done through a hosted version of our event gateway project. So it won't be it won't, won't be running from my computer. Oh, from your computer uh, in the conference, right? You'll bring that with you to the conference, right? We, the, we, the, the assumption is that everything will be cloud accessible. Oh, okay. Yes, correct. So, so actually, so if for us, right, to interop with, um, with your um, gateway or the event source, we can run our code in our lab. We do not need to run in my laptop I bring to the conference, right? Which I bring to the conference. You need a static IP address, and I would suggest running it in the cloud. Right. Okay. Yeah. You need um, to integrate into this demo, you specifically need an HTTP endpoint that's accessible via a post request. Okay. okay. So okay. In, in, the, um, in the chat window of the Zoom conversation, I've just put in a link to the readme that explains everything. It also includes examples of both event schemas now. And um, all the details you need as to how to how to integrate. The only thing that's not in here yet is just the the Twitter details, how that works. And I think we could follow up on that in the um, in the private cloud events demo channel. Uh, are there any concerns that we should worry about with um, like which encoding you're going to use or which responses that you accept or things like that? Mm, no concerns with responses. Um, the encoding is just application JSON. Um, that's what you'll receive in your FAST function. And the image is not actually being included in the event. The only thing that's included in both the AWS S3 event and the Azure storage event is a URL to the image. You're actually getting application slash cloud events plus JSON. Because that's what our specs say. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, so is it, is it one is binary encoding, one is uh, structured encoding, or? No, A application slash cloud events plus JSON is uh, structured, structured yeah. encoding. Okay. And that's what, that's, that's what I'm sending. Okay, and Austin? So I'm, I don't think we're going to be sending that in the demo. Um, I think we're just sending application slash JSON right now. Are you yeah. doing the binary encoding then with the headers? Binary encoding. Um, we're not we're not doing any binary anything in this set. But that's that's what the rule is. The rule is you have to sit. So you should you should change your posts your posts to be to be compliant with what we actually have in the spec, and that is application slash cloud device plus JSON instead of application slash JSON. So so Austin, uh, you have. Everything ready, we can do a integration testing. No, or? This is the tricky part, how, how we actually do this. Um, right now, I, I suggest getting started and just, just mocking, mocking uh, the event. So I've included everything necessary to, um, I've included an example event schemas for both. You can mock them pretty easily. And also the URLs point to images that are on publicly accessible buckets. Um, so plan for that, but I think we have to figure out the testing story. I'm going to follow up with that in the cloud events demo channel. Yeah. Kathy, if you go to the private channel, if you just tell everybody what the URL is to your function endpoint. In the meantime, I, I believe you can get pretty far just mocking. 
Yeah, but you, if you give the URL to your endpoint, uh, these guys will be able to add it to their producing side. For example, Clemens added mine, you know, pretty quickly, and then he can start I audio. Sending I'm not sure if anyone else is talking? Oh, okay. So uh, if we give the endpoint uh, URL, um, so who is going to try it out? The, the, yeah, uh, if you if you stick that into the private chat, Clemens will automatically send you a post every couple of minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, actually, hold, hold on one sec. So, so for, for my demo, I'm, I'm just going to route everything through our event gateway, and I'm actually going to trigger Clement. I'm going to trigger your function through that. Um, so I don't think we're going to be using the, the publishing function that you created, Clement, for, for my demo. Well, but it's, it, it is publishing into all those endpoints anyways. So, th so that lo that runs completely in parallel. You can go and say, you can go and, and tell the story about how you publish, like you you can show the code and all those things. But my thing that will just run in the background just keeps posting stuff every five minutes into everybody's tweet, into everybody's histories, and you can already see that. You see that in the if you look at, at the Twitter accounts now, they're already all getting getting events. Yeah, I hear you. Um, the challenge is this just creates like two places for people to integrate into. They're either handing yeah. me the endpoints or they're handing handing you the endpoints. Well, but that has already happened. Like this is already working. Sure. Is there, is there um, a problem with only integrating with one? Why do we have to integrate with both? Yeah, I think it's better just so, integrate with one. So I'm going to have to call time here because I know other people have phone calls to jump off to. Can we continue this discussion in the private chat? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so it's a Slack, right? It's a Slack yeah. channel, right? Okay. Yeah, hit, hit me up through Slack and I'll invite you, Kathy. Okay, sure. Thank you. Kathy, you're uh, already invited. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. In that case, I'll see, hopefully we'll see most people there at KubeCon. I'm looking forward to next week. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye.